Hi, good afternoon. Today we have Mr. Gyanesh from Vikram Solar. Hello, sir. Hi, how are you? I'm good, sir. And Mr. Joy Saxena from Vikram, from Finance, Executive Director of Finance. Good afternoon. Sir, good afternoon. Uh, sir, we would like to understand about Vikram's new technology that is coming in. What kind of new products Vikram is bringing in uh, in this show? Are we launching any new products? Any new innovations that Vikram is bringing in? Uh, innovation is actually a part of the game in solar uh, and it doesn't need to be disruptive it can be incremental also uh, whereas Vikram is concerned we have always tried to be a little bit ahead of the curve and uh, been able to bring in best practices and best products which are um, available globally to the Indian developers and installers uh, as far as uh, right now uh, what we are uh, coming in with um, our, uh, our new modules, uh, smart, smart, Eldora smart modules, uh, we have a brand new tracking system which is based on the SLU gear technology which is a very innovative way and also robust and maintenance free. So a lot of um, interesting uh, developments um, and that's, that's what we do continuously. Any, any new <laughs> modules that can be sp uh, that are specifically launched in REI 2016, sir? Uh, it, I think it's the Eldora Neo and the Eldora Smart. Uh, these are uh, module uh, Eldora. One of them is the uh, is 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 a micro inverter based module, which is an AC module, which converts DC power into an AC power at the module level of itself. Um, it's not uh, it's it's not a very new thing to do but for us it is new because uh, we have done phenomenal amount of r&d and uh, field tests and trials and we have a lot of data to show that uh, uh, this product is now stable and robust and uh, we are ready to do some large pilots now similarly um, eldora neo which is uh, a bifacial product uh, it's for uh, the discerning customer who wants high efficiency and high quality uh, and is ready to pay a little higher price because of uh, the efficiency matrix that we offer. Uh, these are mostly uh, used for rooftop uh, kind of situations where you have limited land, limited uh, installation space and you need to maximize the output out of that. So these are the two main products. Sir, Vikram is also into EPC uh, field, so how, any challenges you would specifically like to talk about where uh, government can help develop this industry more in a more better way? Uh, well, the EPC business itself is uh, uh, very challenging uh, because there is lack of entry barrier essentially any anyone can decide to be an EPC player and uh, offer products uh, offer solutions rather it's very important to understand why uh, these players are coming in and how they are able to offer it it's not it's not that they are. Some of them are not able to offer quality, but by and large, uh, because of the lack of entry barrier, lack of investment requirement, uh, it becomes a crowded space, and the uh, investor or the developer gets a little lost in the space. Uh, some of the large developers who who have a stable process and a stable organization, where uh, uh, they understand the technology and the uh, and have mature processes within the organization are able to uh, uh, navigate and uh, pick and choose the best uh, EPC partners uh, but it's a challenge sir we are celebrating as I can see on your chest we are celebrating 10 years of Vikram Solar 
sir uh, how has the j this journey been um uh, it's been challenging and very interesting all at the same time uh, it's been a phenomenal learning for me personally also and as an organization we have uh, been able to uh, grow not just in our numbers but also uh, in our uh, size in our capability uh, and there are, there is a whole list of uh, people who are uh, contributors to this success or this journey uh, i will not take any specific names but the, uh, you all know who you are so thank you this question is specifically for joy sir sir vikram has been known for its investments in r&d can you please share what percentage of entire budget you focus on r&d because india as a country is needs innovations and people like or companies like vikram are really investing in this so what kind of budgets you plan for your r&d sir i see it is difficult to say percentage of a budget on r&d but uh, the growth story what has been talked about just now in last 7 to 8 years after the manufacturing we started in 2009 onwards has been based on the growth with the technological improvements only so had you been not been a technological savvy company i don't think that uh, those milestones would have been achieved the company invested a lot we have got uh, our own subsidiary company in germany we have got our own uh, employees over in germany also we have offices in uh, us as well as we have opened a subsidiary company in singapore along with that the technological player who so come from different uh, global market they interact with our team and our r&d team and technology team is very strong but uh, we have spent quite a uh, bit of money in last seven eight years in technology improvements so with all these names can i safely say vikram is a truly indian global company uh, why not uh, i think we are eyeing uh, very seriously to see how we can grow in us market the company what we have now in us we are targeting to see our export go going up and up to us market because of the better margins available there market size is very big so that's one and europe we have seen i mean around 30 countries we have already exported our modules so overall yes you can rightly say that we are a indian global company sir so, uh, i like to come back to you vikram is one of the biggest uh, companies who manufacture modules in india it's now i mean before make in india campaign vikram started manufacturing in india so what can we see from vikram after this uh, make in india campaign how do how how soon can we see vikram is expanding its uh, manufacturing capabilities in india so uh, even before the make in india as you rightly said uh, you know if you go back to the group's dna uh, we have different products in our uh, group portfolio textile engineering products solar as well uh, the group's dna is manufacturing and the group's dna is quality oriented manufacturing meant for the export market now when you put all this together you already have a very uh, very significant mix of uh, mindset which is of high efficiency high customer consciousness and high delivery and uh, this was there as a group dna when we started solar manufacturing i remember that the first product that come came out with at the plant level i made sure that we had put a sticker quality made in india it's a small round sticker mm -hmm. so that quality word and made in india not make in india but made in india that i purposely put because i am proud of the fact that this is made in india and i am also proud of the fact that we are now the only indian company on the top 10 global list of the tier 1 manufacturers so there is uh, no doubt that the make in india campaign has reinforced this many fold we uh, you know um, our prime minister is a great uh, uh, persuasive person with a with good showmanship and he brings uh, these campaigns to life and rightly so uh, i think uh, we should be proud in the early 70s 80s 90s 
we would see electronics made in Japan and think that they are the best. But now I can tell you that Vikram is exporting solar panels to Japan. So uh, if you really believe it's possible, you make it happen. And I feel that that's what we've been able to do. Sir, can you please tell us uh, to achieve this 100 gigawatts within 2022, the target that has been set by our Prime Minister, what more push the industry needs from the government? Um, I think the government is trying very hard to bring um, bring hygiene to the whole policy infrastructure around solar. Um, we are working uh, at various levels with uh, the government uh, to, to support in this policy making from the industry side. I am um, personally involved at various levels at PICI, at CII, uh, at industry associations and uh, in individual capacity as well. The, the challenge seems to be more on the manufacturing side of things. Uh, we can look at uh, developing projects to the scale of uh, you know gigawatts, mm -hmm. but it has to be ensured that we see those projects see the light of day. Now, all that can happen once uh, we we lose the sh the dependency on foreign imports and support manufacturers. Uh, to make the product reliable, to make it cheaper, make it affordable, make it, uh, uh, you know, make the supplies dependable. These are very large uh, commitments in terms of value, in terms of volume. And to depend on purely on foreign imports, I don't think that's a good idea. US has uh, imposed anti-dumping on uh, Chinese, U Europe has also. And it's time that India starts looking at developing and nurturing its own solar manufacturing sector to achieve this scale. But having said that, sir, uh, still in India, it's a major issue to make ingot and wafers at the wafer level or cell level. A company, big company like Vikram can do that, but not many would like to. I mean, silicon quality is not that great in India. So, what do you think, how this can happen, I mean, what level do we have to work to make this happen? The complete manufacturing, not only assembly, but, but the complete manufacturing from silicon itself. Uh, tell me, when, when there was no steel manufacturing, the government invested in its own steel plants, which now are Steel Authority of India. And they established technology, established processes, established uh, you know large-scale manufacturing setups. And now the whole industry is uh, independent and on its own, right? Why can similar things not happen right now? Why can uh, the government not act as an incubator, as a facilitator for investment and support to bring in large uh, manufacturing? Uh, industries because ultimately if that does not happen we will be uh, doing what we did in electronics same thing would happen in solar large billion dollars of imports on a regular basis currently I think if the number is right almost 80% uh, of the Indian solar market is catered with imported solar panels now by the balance sheet of these international companies, you don't even know if these companies are going to survive going forward. So, what is the what is the uh, value of this investment? These panels have to last for 25 years. They have to be bankable. They have to be trustworthy. If the companies don't last, then how do these panels expect to last? So, these, the, 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 I'm being critical, but I'm also seeing this as an opportunity for us manufacturers to push. Uh, uh, the envelope a little further and to uh, it also is dependent on us and on whether we are able to um, deliver a product which is worthy of international standard otherwise why would anybody trust an Indian manufacturer back in the early days when we started 
nobody wanted to buy an Indian electronic product. A solar panel is essentially a you know semiconductor, right? Nobody wanted to buy it because India is not known for that. So this has to change. This mindset has to change. Most of the global um, IT companies have Indian people working for them. A lot of the CEOs and MDs of large corporates have Indian people leading them. So, uh, if we put our heads together, we will find a way. So, finally, I'd like to understand how the show has been till date. I mean, for you, this show is always uh, very important for us. So, uh, we are celebrating 10 years, same as uh, UBM. And uh, I think we have been here with UVM for 10 years also. Uh, so it's a, it's a joint journey. And I uh, feel very proud to be associated. And uh, the show has grown many fold. It has, uh, you know, the attendance has increased leaps and bounds. And uh, it's, it's one that nobody wants to miss anymore. So very encouraged by the response and the team is very happy with the show response. I'd like to thank you both sir. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks you sir.